the main thing you see in networks is uh, more of the same. So basically, you know, we still have scale up data centers. We still have, so we, you know, we have 100 gigabits going deployment in data centers. We have to scale up and figure out how 5G works and how we cooperate between cell towers and figure out how to, you know, radio level and the network level and fast handover work and so on. Um, and uh, and then we still have to fix all the problems in the end user devices in terms of, uh, we haven't really made much progress in fixing the security and privacy of end user devices. So these are all challenges which, they're like they were 10 years ago and 20 years ago and 30 years ago, except that they're like 1,000, 1 million and 1 billion times more than they were 10 and 20 and 30 years ago. Right now, the main technology I'm working on um, is to do with distributed analytics and edge AI. And this is kind of interesting because we have to scale up the number of nodes we use, but also the very high variation and network performance between all the nodes. So that's kind of, that's one, one area that I think is just needs to be uh, to be dealt with. The areas uh, I think are kind of fun and I, I think I've probably only seen the very beginning of um, it, it really is autonomous vehicles. I mean UAVs is one piece of that um, but the um, the kind of mixture of uh, ground and uh, uh, you know, dr drones flying is kind of interesting but it's going to deploy much slower than people think but we already see, you know, pretty wide scale uh, trials say so it will deploy, it will be very uneven, but it's super interesting as you deploy things, then that's a, an area where you're going to use the thing I talked about before, where you have, have to have distributed analytics. These devices have to learn and act on what they're learning. But you also have to respect safety requirements, which is really, really hard. And uh, people have not understood how difficult that is. So that's a really interesting area. So I'm actually really surprised the internet has not completely broken at some point. So I, I'm waiting for uh, a thing. I was reading recently a book uh, about uh, uh, analyzing risks and failures in systems called uh, Normal Accidents. And it's a really great book by this guy Perot who's involved in looking at Three Mile Island and what went wrong when they had the first real nuclear power station meltdown. Uh, and he predicted there will be another one within 10 years. Yes, there was Chernobyl and now we've had the Japanese uh, disaster as well. And these systems are very complex, but they're not as complex as the internet. Um, but he analyzes it in really interesting ways about complexity and, and how tightly coupled the systems are and whether they're linear or they have feedback loops or not. Um, and so nonlinear systems with feedback loops that are highly coupled are very problematical. Well, the internet has all of that. Uh, in many areas and so uh, we've had various problems but they've somehow stayed relatively localized so we, we've had black holing of the whole of YouTube by accidental configuration of BGP. Uh, we've had DDoS attacks by bad people where they used uh, uh, Memcached to attack Akamai with a terabit a second of traffic. So there are, th but these are the only um, reduce the service in some areas. But I think at some point we're gonna see something which literally disconnects a large piece of the internet completely. Uh, I don't see you know, how we can predict that won't happen and we don't have operational procedures, we don't have assurance, we don't have any form of verification. At some point this will happen probably completely by accident, but possibly because of a combination of misconfigurations and some bad actor uh, and I don't see you know, why if we have airplane accidents, we have train accidents, we have nuclear power station breaking, why the internet is sort of special. And then um, it's going to be interesting to see how we then deal with that. Uh, so that's one prediction, I think. You know, there's a reasonable chance, you know, maybe 50-50 in the next 10 years that we will have no internet for a while. That means no cell phones, right? That means, you know, no control of a bunch of systems and how do we get back from that is really tricky. Um, so, you know, that's a, uh, that's a worry. Um, it might just be that we isolate chunks of the network and on national boundaries or ISPs just disconnect from other ISPs and then can reconfigure, but that's not gonna work very well. That's not the internet. Um, so that's one prediction. Um, I think there's um, interesting things happen when you, re-decentralize the internet, which is one way to prevent that happening, 
if we read decentralized services so that everything is fully decentralized to end users, uh, it's much, much more robust, much more resilient. That's super interesting. Um, uh, it's, it's challenging because it's more complex to configure, but it's how a lot of systems work very early on before the cloud started centralizing things. We had email and we had websites that were fully decentralized and, and, and decoupled from each other and could, could advance uh, in their own ways. So we can do that with all services and that, that's kind of cool. Um, I, I think that could happen more and more, not just because of privacy concerns, but also because of energy, that it would be a more energy efficient way of doing things. And also um, because we, can do it because the capacity you get as we put more fiber into more places we get nearer the end users with fiber everywhere and we have 4G and 5G deployment reaching further and further everywhere and scaling up uh, Wi-Fi deployments everywhere uh, and you know other radios coming on stream that scales these systems up so you can get a decentralized operation can recover that way of doing things so you know, that that may happen I I think it's kind of 50 50 I th actually I think it will happen but the question is how what fraction of the network will operate that way um, is kind of interesting so that would be my other sort of prediction that we, people rediscover those ways of doing things we already have it's sort of patchy and it will just you know that it's in some places or some kinds of apps i think it will happen more so that will be that will be interesting so that might mitigate the previous prediction